Welcome back to another banger guys. Thank you guys for joining me, your boy Tony today. Um, today's kind of part two, part three, I'm not sure. I think it's part two. If you guys haven't been caught up yet, we're doing the bug, we're doing a full back kit on my car. We're doing a Monroe air shocks front and rear. We're doing the airlift compressor uh, manual. So we're doing kind of an old school setup. If you guys haven't caught on, if you guys haven't seen the first video, I'm gonna link it down in the description below. We do the MP3 rod, but like I said, I'm not sure. I'm in the middle of it right now, so. Right now what we're gonna do is the rear, we're gonna start working on that. Um, I'm hyped, because the rear should be a little bit easier than the front, uh, but then again, things don't always go that well. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. You guys can see, we currently got the spaceship up right here. Basically what I need to do, is I need to do the rears. Took off the tires already, car's already a bunch of extents, whatnot. Let me show you guys where I jacked it up from actually. So in the back, there's a brace. If you guys can see that, it's right there. My finger's pointing at it, that brace. That's where I jacked it up from using the jack. And then I put these two jack stands right underneath this like arm thing. That seems to be part of the chassis and it holds up well. All right, so when you buy these, they don't come, the, the bottom part is too big and too small for the actual uh, stud that's on, the, that's on the arm, on the car. So I drilled it out on this one. And all I used was a half inch uh, drill bit. Went through it. And then it's fine. There's still enough metal there for me to feel comfortable using it, so I don't mind. Um, I'm gonna have to shave this down a little bit so it has, so I have room for the actual uh, nut to go on there because it's a little bit too thick. All right, so this, I, this end I have to shave down on both ends to make it fit because it's a little bit too fat. what the front looks like with both of them situated um, I pretty much put the bottom one in first pretty much just hand tighten the bolt and then I raised it up like with the jack underneath the drum so that I can get this top one in and then that's it and then after that I let it go and it kind of stretched out the bag but it's fine that's the front front not too hard this is the rear setup um, basically what we need to do first is loosen up this fender loosen I'd say loosen up a saw probably like the first three so probably up to here there's one two and then three that's what we're gonna need to do we're also gonna need to take off the shock which is just the bolt right here and then the bolt on the bottom something light and then after that we're gonna start taking off like these which is like gonna be the more extensive part because we need to if you guys know about this setup there's a torsion arm that goes inside this it goes inside this and that's kind of what keeps tension and allows you to go up and down uh, with the stock like suspension. You can raise the car, lower the car. You're basically, you're basically right, making it right stiffer or you're basically making it right like, uh, like you're on cut springs. And they make a plate that's adjustable and stuff right here that you basically replace this whole arm and it's adjustable on the outside so you don't have to mess with the spindles on the inside of the torsion arm. Um, it's, really, it's a really big bar. It goes like all the way across to the other side and it just basically holds tension for the wheels. But uh, what we're gonna do is actually move it up because if you move it up, you're gonna get more travel. And we need more travel if we want the wheel to re really, really, really sit up inside the wheel well. So that's what we have to do. I could just put in the shocks, but it's not really gonna lower it. It's gonna lower it maybe like an inch, but we're not gonna do all this work to lower the car an inch. So we're gonna do this. But basically we're gonna start off with all the easy stuff, remove the fender, not remove the fender. You could if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna loosen up three bolts, uh, take off the air shock, take off the stroke because we're not gonna need it no more. And then we'll start working on these two right here. All right, first things, ladies and gents, right here. Take off this bump stop. Bump stop. You're gonna need to take that off. Put it back later when you're done. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, these three bolts right here, 19s, all of them. So, not on the back. You already know what it is. All right, next up, just take off your little uh, bolts for the actual shock or strut top bolt bottom bolt 19s pretty self-explanatory all right this is kind of how you can tell when you when your struts are bad i compress these by hand all the way down and if you guys notice it's 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 not moving at all like at all at all they're, they were almost the same size as these and if you guys notice they're like it's literally not moving so both of those rears were blown out. The rear, the fronts were all right. See, look, this is what I mean. You press it down. Shh. 
Okay, I don't. Jeez. No, I'm blowing out too. No, that was, see, that one's going up slowly. Eventually, it'll get there. Let's see this one. This other front one, man. See, this one's barely all right. These are barely hanging in there. Man. I didn't put these in. These were already in the car when I got them, so. Who even knows how old they are, what brand they are. Four bolts around this cap thing to take off because we're going to need that to come off for this thing to come out for us to adjust it. A lot of different ways you guys can go at this but i'm gonna do this the easiest way and i'm gonna just literally just cut all this piece out the way it scrapes i'm just gonna cut it out with an angle grinder so i'm marking it up as to what i need now we can let this down again you guys can see how much i need to cut out exactly so i'm gonna cut that real quick and then we'll get back to it Now that you cut out for yourself to clear this, now we can hit it from the back side. Don't hit, don't try to pry it out from here because it's sitting on this ledge and it's under a lot of tension. So when it comes out, it's gonna come down with a lot of force. So just be mindful of that. So hit it from the back. That wasn't too bad. Now there's a bushing holding onto it from the inside. So we're gonna have to pry this thing out. Now that it's free from that, we're gonna have to pry this thing out. Little by little, but. That's what we have to do. All right, mine, mine kind of just popped out, but let me see. A bunch of stuff in here. The bushing is directional, so it only goes in one way. So in case it falls out like that, you know how to put it back in. I turned it up three notches, so I basically took it out, twisted it, felt the little grooves on the inside of the, like the actual t torsion bar, felt them, moved it up, I think about four times, and then uh, should have given me all the clearance I need to run what I want. So I put everything back together, everything's moved up. As you can see, it's no longer sitting right here. It's gonna, it's sit, I marked the markings right here, and that's just with four teeth being moved up. So right now I'm gonna put the arm back on and uh, we should be able to put the bag on uh, with no issues, man. That's the goal at least right now and just put it back. So here we go, guys. This is the finished product. Uh, if you guys can see, it's pretty even like that. You guys can see that it's pretty even all the way across. Everything's already bolted up. The bags are fitted in there. Uh, I don't have no clearance issues or anything like that up in the here. Everything came out pretty well torsion arms are in everything's tightened up fenders on as well look see everything's ready to go from the rear this is the other side this is the side i did first so it's a little bit more messed up than my other side but it, it's honestly not bad of a job a lot of like uh force that needs to be used for this because the actual turning part and adjusting is easy but like trying to force stuff to be in places that technically they should but apparently they don't fit is the hard part but adjusting it is not too hard if you guys have like a different year i think this is the hardest year i think if you guys have like the older style there's just one bar across that bolts up to the back of this and you guys could just take off the bolts from there but let's say you guys have like a, I think it's like the uh late 60s or like early 70s before 72 they have this bottom bolt on top and it's a little bit easier because the um, this the thick one goes between two of those so the actual torsion arm has two plates instead of one mine has one and that one you can just slide out those i think are a little bit easier but since these are a little bit trickier i figured we'd have to notch that part out on the top so it wasn't even that bad i don't i'm not worried about the structural integrity of it, it it'll still work but you guys can see i have to both sides that look about the same happy with how they came out compared to the front the rears were actually honestly a lot easier because everything up kind of just went in the way it should have it wasn't really 
everything went kind of well to be honest i think the next video is going to be me running the actual lines from there to the compressor and running all the airlines uh like electric lines but that's going to be for the next video this video i just kind of wanted to do the rear so i hope you guys enjoyed the the rear install i'm gonna put up a picture right here so you guys can see how the splines work because if you rotate it from the inside it lowers it a different amount than if you lowered it from the outside so you guys can kind of use that chart to kind of like figure and uh dial in your guys' setup i should have have about seven to eight inches of travel now so the car should be able to raise up and lower back down pretty evenly so that's that's my plan crisp nice and clean i just wanted to sit on the floor to be honest so if it does close to that then i'll, I'll I'll be happy man like I said the reason we're a little bit just time-consuming I'd say it's probably the easiest part of that the wiring and stuff I'm gonna have a chart ready for you guys so you guys can see as well but um, if nothing else guys I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, look be on the lookout for part three I believe it's gonna be part three and uh, after that it's cookies man after that next video we should be airing out um, I'm kind of too lazy to show you guys how lowered it is just based on the adjustments we made but it, it does sit lower it probably sits about like four inches lower it's insane it's probably gonna be rubbing in the rear but can't complain about that right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mind it so next video definitely the car is gonna be on the ground so look out for that video and then I have a bunch of like oem stuff that i need to replace on the car um one of them being the windshield wipers because if you guys remember mine hasn't been working forever and i already replaced the fuse the relay and all that but that's gonna be for the next video guys so i hope you guys I hope I shared some knowledge with you guys. If you guys have the similar year bug, mine is a 72. So if you guys have similar style suspension, then I guess you guys got to cut it, man. You guys got to cut it. I think it's the easiest way just having to cut it. I don't know any other way to be able to do it. I asked my dad. My dad's kind of a bug expert. So with that being said, guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed it, if you guys was beneficial in any way, shape, or form to you guys, please make a fat thumbs up in the video. Subscribe so you guys don't miss out when I drop my next banger, which is going to be the bug airing out. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing blessed day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.